whereas um, others, such as Michael Galeo, have done um, research on the heart saying that it's more of a regulator with gas exchange, as, as you said, more, more suction than anything else. How, how do you feel about the idea of, of you saying it's a break and someone else saying it, it's a regulator? Everybody Did everybody hear that? No. That um, Frank described the heart as a break, um, and the question is, uh, how is that in relation to Michael DeLeo's work, um, where he has uh, uh, put forward that if the heart is a regulator? Yeah. Just so happen to have this here. <laughs> so let's find a regulator in this form. I put this into water and start it. We'll see what this does, this seven sided form does. You see that it starts the vortex right away. Now the vortex will go down into the form and it will work itself way down to the very tip. That's why the apex of the heart is tapered thin, because the vortex won't go down all the way. Now, what regulates the vortex speed is the circle that's forming at the bottom, at the very top, and you'll see why. See what happens when you go too fast? It will spurt out to the side, and it's spurting out to the side because the form won't allow it to get any bigger. So the form is regulating the vortex. Okay, it is also breaking it so that it can't go down too far and the vortex doesn't get too strong and it's balancing it and of course breaking is regulating. The heart is really a regulator. It is a break. It's not a pump. It doesn't pump. The blood runs through it in a vortex that's basically generated from the periphery. Our blood circulates not because of pressure but because of suction. The periphery is why our blood is moving away at us. Not the center. Not the center part in the middle of the heart. That's not what's it's not a pump. So this research is the first time it can actually say that the heart is not a pump. And uh, Pfeiffer in his lecture, in his heart lecture, says right here, he says that uh, if I could find it, he said that uh, no, I thought it was closer here. I might, I may, I might be able to find it. Maybe I can. But he said in the end here that uh, he said that we can't just go around quoting Rudolf Steiner. <laughs> okay? we, what we have to do okay, is do the work. Okay? And we have to just not talk about heart thinking. We have to wait until we have something, uh, some kind of research that shows what the heart is actually doing. Okay? So luckily, we got a start that I hope young people will take up. Because I just got a little star here. I can't do all this myself. I can't do it. So I'm hoping that other people will take it up because it's really cool. It's really fun. Uh, <laughs> and if I take this little guy right here, this is the first start of it. If I take this guy, this little tulip, I call it a tulip. It's a seven-sided form of it. Extend it out into a sphere. And this little guy will implode. Not explode, but implode. And I'll try to show you the implosion. The only problem is, is it gets kind of wet, maybe. But I'll, I'll try to slow it down. But this, this little guy right here, you'll see an implosion. You won't see this anywhere else. This, this will implode water. Watch the vortex that comes down into this point. Can you see the vortex? Do you see it come in? What it does is it comes into the form, and it implodes the form. And watch what it does to water. It completely, uh, that's amazing power. Just from a little drill. That's, in, that's known as implosion. So imagine, this is, if this is all tokenizing of water, which we're all trying to do, huh? In biodynamics, right here. <laughs> so look how little this is. This is just electric drill. The vortex is still there. And this there. is based on seven side form. Look at this. Wait a sec, the vortex is still there. Oh yeah, now it you can see a vortex steady. going. Now what's really interesting is if you it's photograph steady. that, there are three vortexes. When I stop this, there are three vortexes and they're spinning. That's what happens in the human heart. There are three vortexes. And Dr. Pettigrew said in the 1850s that out of the, 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 the uh, aorta, there are three vortexes. Now I'll tell you another thing that's really cool. If I take this form, 
which has the aorta in it, and that's a real uh, artificial heart aorta valve that I found on the internet. <laughs> if I put the aortic arch, it has an arch like this. You know that? Uh, if you study the heart, you'll see that the aorta comes out in an arch like this, and it goes down and it veins up to the top. Okay, every single time the heart beats, okay, this, okay, if I put pressure into a hose, what does it do? It rains out, doesn't it? Every time the heart beats, the aorta does this. That is suction. That's no, not pressure. Ah, uh, yeah. This is suction. So the blood is not being pumped out of the heart. It's being sucked out. And the reason the muscles are so thick, which I showed, the reason they're so thick is not to get the blood out, but to keep it in. Because what happens in the heart is that 50% of the time, 50% of the blood is held in the heart at all times. And what, what keeps that blood in there, what keeps 50% of the blood in our heart all the time? The muscles. It doesn't push it out, it keeps it back. Because the suction here is up, measured up to 10 G's. 1 G is when you put your hand over the back of it. Imagine doubling or going 10 times stronger. Even in an aircraft when it goes off and into a dive, I think 7 G's will pass out. This is 10 G's coming out of the heart. So all the suction is coming out, okay? And the heart is trying to keep 50% of it back. And, uh, and this part here is paper thin. And if this was under pressure, this would be the first thing that blew out like a like a inner tube. This would just boom right out, and it doesn't. That's because the vortex doesn't get down all the way because of this circle right here in the saw in the water. You know, I can keep talking and talking. <laughs> <laughs>